Hi everyone, this is Greg aka Grégoire from France, from Greg's Whiskey Guide, the website, but most often these days, the YouTube channel since 2019. Well, today, and apologies as I noticed my new glasses <laughs> make some reflections. I didn't pick them in order to do the best videos reflection-wise, so sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm going to be able now to read better the labels on those bottles, so it, it's something rather good for me. Uh, well, that said, I'm continuing here uh, my series about face-to-face -face old versus new, not necessarily versus per se, uh, they're different, they're, they're going to be different, Mo more than 40 years of difference of age but of bottle age uh, so anyway it's gonna be different but um, it's also a thing to see how the things evolved in the brand and the brand that we're gonna see today and I'm gonna show you uh, it face to face uh, later uh, later on is famous grouse famous cross showcasing here as you can see the uh, which is not a bird, mind you, uh, it is a game. Uh, so it's in, in French it's gibier, et la famille c'est les lagopèdes. Uh, so it's a kind of uh, a game that you can see uh, across the roads. Also, I saw some in 2018 in the Highlands. Uh, highlands and uh, everything that's a bit high uh, in Scotland and in Ireland. Uh, they're mostly uh, <laughs> crawling into the moors. Um, the brand has been established in two uh, in eighty eighty uh, thousand um, by M Matthew Glog and and Sons. His, uh, the, it's the founder. I'm gonna explain just a bit more. Uh, about it uh, very soon and then um, there will be more in the description as usual in order not to lose too much time uh, to presentation and to favor uh, the tasting and I'm gonna compare this uh, let me show you I'm gonna compare this bottle uh, from 2020 uh, which didn't come with this but uh, this is an old tube this is interesting when I say old rather uh, around 2010 but it has an interesting story behind it so I, I will uh, use it to do the uh, historical background as well as this very uh, useful book whoops okay we'll see that after <laughs> um, and I will compare it of course that's the reason I, I'm doing this with this bottle I had the real chance to find a few years ago uh, it was an old stock from uh, a retailer he got from someone another one who died etc so it was a big case of different brands in it and uh, I, I had the first choice and uh, uh, I helped a, a friend who had more money than me to get the, f the, the second choice but the first choice on high-end stuff but I got my hands on something that's almost high-end, so we'll see in another video, which is an old 12 years old Glen Livet, uh, which is a really a great one. And this famous Kraus, which is for a uh, French market, and we will see it more uh, in a minute. But what you can see already is how the things have changed over the years, and also this amazing age statement that is here. Uh, you won't believe it all over guaranteed all over six years you can see that and 43 percent abv and uh yeah i i managed to date almost not super precisely but for sure uh before a certain time this old bottle and for uh, you as you can see they were not making the same kind of glasses at that time while this is thicker and uh, more uh, classic and also uh, more thin uh, over the years. But I will see that shortly. Yeah, this is uh, a bit close, 
a bit small here so I struggle sometimes to uh, present you things uh, as I could if I have more room um, yeah I'm using this which is Charles McLean pocket book I had in uh, second hand as you can see it's a bit the cover is a bit damaged but still very useful this and all the books I have behind me up and down um, and yeah Matthew Glog uh, who died in 1860 was a grandfather of the creator of famous Gross uh, and it was involved in, in, in sporting estates so uh, yeah he married in uh, 1797 uh, uh, the daughter of a grocer and wine in uh, and in 1820 took over the business supplying the gently uh, gentry of Perthshire with provision when Queen Victoria visited the town in 1842 Glog invited it, her to supply the wines and the story goes on and on and in fact um, the name famous Gruce was chosen to uh, with the hope to attract the sports the sportsmen with were uh, which were uh, going into Perth where this is located was located uh, and was supposed to be mellowed okay enough for uh, some of the back ground story so to put a long story short it was something targeted to be popular among a certain class or category of population but it became one of the favorite blends from uh, Scottish people more widely and this uh, great very nice tube I had a few years ago probably a decade ago uh, explained that with um, also showing all the different kinds of crews that you can find in Scotland to start with um, yeah and also as I don't have currently uh, uh, an official bottling of uh, two of the three uh, key whiskies that started the, the adventure, even if the recipe has changed a bit, I, I, won't, I didn't put them on the table. But I can tell you the heart of uh, this uh, blend, uh, famous cruise, is the Macallan, of course, and Highland Park. But also, and you could see that in the visitor center uh, until last year, because this distillery has been now taken over by a French group called Lalique, uh, which is do, doing glassware, uh, luxury glassware. Uh, Glen, the Glen Turret, of course, uh, I don't have at the moment, but I heard I should have the 12 years old, um, apparently. Um, so the Glen Turret distillery was, uh, which is a, a very tiny distillery with slow distillation, uh, was supposed to be uh, showcasing the, the blend, uh, the famous Cruz blend. So for a lot of time, the visitor center was uh, almost focused on, on this with everything designed from the outside. And, and uh, as as a bit like uh, a one I visited, Aberfeldy paired with the Wars uh, blended whiskey, but they had to change it because uh, the Glen, they uh, Hedrington Group, uh, which owns McAllen Highland Park, a famous cruise, um, had to uh, decided to sell the distillery. So when they sold the distillery to to La Ligue, uh, and I think there's another group that has a share on it um, they had to dismantle the visitor center because uh, the Glen Turret apparently they might be still in there uh, but they they no longer are the one of the main components it seems it's to be taken with reservation I couldn't have a confirmation of uh, the um, famous cross but there are two other distilleries and I have examples but uh which are implied and of course there's probably 20 30 more uh regarding uh malt whiskey because as usual you know that blended whiskey is made in major part of uh, grain whiskey around 70 75 percent depends on the brands and sometimes of the expression within the brands uh while the 
75% grain and 25% sorry uh, malted barley so this is still a minority but there you have it now Highland Park, uh, Macall the Macallan, um, the Glen Rothes and Tamdu even if Tamdu is now at uh, Jan MacLeod distiller in terms of ownership um, so basically yeah the other thing we you have to know yeah of course th they still say uh, crafted cask etc but if you go uh, beyond the marketing um, this is something that's still highlighted there handcrafted cask okay uh, come on um, by the way this one is for Europe and you have the mention of uh, caramel coloring as many contemporary blended whiskies from Scotland and elsewhere as well uh, before entering too much into the comparison um, I might speak again about famous grouse because I have also uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, different expressions from famous grouse this one called snow grouse which is single gr uh, blended grain if I'm not mistaken um, this uh, there was a black grouse which was supposed to be a bit smoky but not very convincing I didn't replace it um, there's a one that's uh, a bit old which is a 12 years old it is not a blended whiskey it's uh, it's too much reflection sorry guys it's a, blend, a blended malt which is rare so this one I opened it recently uh, there was a battle a while ago so uh, uh, battle in 2004 so I might review it separately I think it de deserves it and this one current expression I quite like which is the cask in the cask series they have different finishes and this one is the port cask finish so currently available uh, and <laughs> the right way I forgot to pour me the whiskies I was talking about so while I say that uh, I hope you're well uh, this and now we have today we have snow coming in to Paris for the first time um, which is nice but at the same time we have a curfew at six o'clock from today on Saturday thank you um, silly world we're living in won't go too much in this because it's YouTube and it's not a political channel but there will be a lot to say and I can say a lot in private so basically what do we have here again and so if the disposal is a bit amateurish but I'm doing my best to present you things I don't know what's going on with the lighting today so again the oldest one I did my searches and I know now for sure why because uh, I saw it in, in, in books and in websites that the Kraus the grouse image became in color in 1974 so this label cannot be uh, made after 1974 that's simple as that also this is a French bottling uh, prior to 1983 for sure because there's still this massive D like I said in the Shivas Regal uh, and Valentine's review uh, I put a link below to the presentation of the whole thing that I did when I uh, explain uh, what I'm going to do in, uh, in all the bottles in the first review of the four and maybe five because I have two Johnny Walkers now probably to do uh, instead of one red label and blue label old versus new again um, so what we can see here and the most interesting of course it's the age statement uh, which is very rare uh, now in uh, some in, in many most of the uh, blended whiskies especially not the high-end ones uh, also 
the GL mention uh, on on the other side, which is um, hmm, I, I didn't find out why, but I know this is an old measure. Oh, Gay-Lussac, sorry. Gay-Lussac, which is a chemist, a French chemist. I knew that. Uh, so this is the, the old ways of uh, saying it was the, 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 the percentage of alcohol, uh, the ABV. The old way in French was the Gay-Lussac scale of uh, alcohol level, which is very strange for us now. Uh, the mention quality, extra qualities is, is really funny. <laughs> Matthew Glog and Sons is uh, very much uh, in front of the label uh, highlighted. Well, you can see here it is not. Uh, but they highlight the fact that the Queen has appointed the brand uh, here. Other interesting thing is the mention of the French importer which was exclusive to France with his Guan. You can see down here. And of course his address, De Rue saint Estef, Paris 12 e This is very, uh, this has some charm of the old, uh, old days, I have to say. Other thing is, like I said, the, uh, and this is not super obvious here compared to the other brands, but the uh, the uh, the base of the old bottles like that were very flat. Very uh, well, this one is still flat, but it's not the same kind. You can see the this part. There's a wee hole, so it's not the same kind of glass as well. Uh, the, this one, the the new one is thicker, obviously, but not so much. The shape also here on this part is different uh well so so lots of change and then on the back label it's also folklore folklore some folklore as well the over six years is really put uh, ahead while the emphasis well i talked about those distilleries forgot to say uh, Highland Park, McAllen, and um, Tam Du and Glen Rothes and Glen Thread. It's because part, part of the production, not all, they're often focusing on sherry casks. Zeres. So in French. So uh, that is why uh, the proportion in this blended whiskey is more important than for many others, uh, proportion of sherry casks. Right. What other things? There's a French uh, text here, which explains uh, also uh, for French audience, uh, we it can be considered um, la grousse. On, on l'appelle aussi uh, le coq de bruyère, donc le cousin du grand tétras des Alpes. Uh, et voilà. Après, bon, c'est de la pub. In English, it's funny also. The famous grousse brand combines the rarest and costliest of Scotch whiskies with the cumulative blending experience of five generations of the Glog family in direct succession since 18,000. The result, and sorry for the Scottish audience, is just for fun. Uh, impersonation of Scottish accent. The result is an acknowledged masterpiece of exquisite lightness and flavor, a delight to taste, the ultimate experience in Scotch whiskey. <laughs> okay, okay, we got it. We got it. We got it, guys. We got it. So, oh yeah, I forgot the color test. So the old one is here, the new one is here. I still haven't found the moment. That's quite close. Maybe more caramel coloring in the recent one. It's hard to tell with the reflections, honestly. Yeah, it's a bit more uh, amber. One <laughs> one fifty eight amber. <laughs> um, okay, so left. Yeah, it shows. And right. Okay, let's put this down. 
because it's a bit disturbing for me to have those bottles. Um, excuse me. I'm going to taste them neat and then taste them uh, with a drop of water. Like I said in this series, I'm not going to use ice because the old one would probably not handle it as this I explained why in another video. Um, okay, so on to the nose of the old famous crows. So probably early 70s or before 1974 or late 60s. Very green right off the bat. This tea, old style tea, black tea, and uh, some kind of mushroomy, almost musty uh, forest moss. Of course, as usual, there's, a, there's, there's some part of OBA, old bottle effect, so kind of rounded, more subtle flavors and uh, more melted, less shining out, less coming across strong. Yeah, there's some kind of unusual, almost unnatural note as well. As if it was a bit degraded, so... I won't say engine oil, but it's it's almost some Campbelltown funk in it. I don't know why. But a very old school, very old school blend. Okay, this for the nose. Recalibrating with my own odor. Ooh, the new wine, the sherry cask are coming across strong, but also the caramel and also probably some kind of burnt, um, heavily charred, uh, malted whiskies, but mostly grain whiskies. As I sense it, lots of caramels, natural and not natural. A lot of sherry. So had the honey comes across strong, so no mistake, there's some Highland Park in this. And uh, sherried Highland Park, mind you. That's why this one usually is around 15 to 60 or almost 70 euros here. So a few euros more from usual, even Valentine's finest. Um, the, uh, and also four or five more euros than the very average low shelf uh, blended whiskies. So it's a bit of a, a better uh, quality one usually than uh, also always batch variations. At this point, forgot to mention uh, that there are, um, there were, there was a blended whiskey called Naked Kraus, and in let's say around 2010 or 14, I don't remember exactly, um, they switched from blended whiskey Naked Kraus to a blended malt Naked Kraus. As it is right now I don't have it here uh, it's not something we see a lot on the shelves here you have to go to a special retailers or order it online it seems it doesn't have the success it should have because it's a nice one usually I kind of preferred it when it was a blend it was very sophisticated more complex in my opinion but I like the uh, naked grouse um, blended malt and I should uh, manage to have it I hope someday to do a review for you so yeah the new one is is a pretty much a standard blend a bit up upping the game with more sherry cask so now we're gonna see what's going on on the palette making sure it's my first tasting of the day, probably not the, the last, but uh, I'm not sure I'm going to have time to do another review today to publish later on, so we'll see. Uh, I've been a lot, uh, busy and tired this 
last week so I couldn't keep up with uh, everything I wanted to publish twice instead of one but I couldn't once but I could so hope okay so the old one again I'm tasting this now old famous grouse but six years old at least we know that we don't know for the new one it has to be three years old plus of course mm. wow it's better than first time i tried it and second This is a kind of thing I don't open often and I, I don't guess them but I I use the pump wine pump only and put back immediately the um, the screw cap because I don't want too much air to come into this it's very fragile so it come across with some OBE of course um, there is a loss I sense it for the sherry part um, also probably for the grain the freshness of the grain mm. but the result is beautiful i have to say uh, even if it's a bit toned down by the air uh, uh, then 1974 at least so we can imagine we're 2020 so 50, almost 50 years or maybe 50 years of difference so I will do a preservation video. I've been asked for several times and I always forgot. Uh, because whiskey does not move in theory in the bottle, but according to the place you store it, the uh, the cork or the, the screw cap, how it is done, how it is uh, kept, it can change, it can affect the content. And the content can also with time especially this kind of uh, gap of 50 years their content can lower up as I experienced it recently without even opening the bottle so beware and check if you have old stuff check it on a regular basis to see if it moves and if it moves open it extract uh, the air with a, a wine pump or a gas a wine preserver gas bomb uh, and uh, please seal it then after with parafilm and stuff because uh, it, it has to be uh, coming back to to normal if I may say uh, and, and then, then open it only a few months after and you might see it recovering I have an experience now <laughs> currently and I hope the whiskey which was a nice gift will uh, will be okay Okay, still rambling, sting building, very, very long, I'm sorry. Yeah, so sherry, a lot of green elements, but it's normal uh, in old whiskies, mind you, they were, have ha had more typicity. If you, uh, if you are, and we will see that soon, as much as I can soon, I cannot give you any day. When I will do the, I talk to you already about the 12 years old Glenlivet comparison, the whole range and one exceptional bottle from the same <laughs> batch of uh, purchases of, uh, of this uh, a few years ago and, pr and from the early 80s as well. Uh, not as well, but this one is older uh, for sure. Um, but yeah, so there's more typicity, there's more uh, green elements. Uh, also, the content was often older, even older than the, the age statement. There was some comfort to use, you know, older casks, some, not all, of course, uh, than the age statement. And when it was not age statement, they were still putting in more old, old content to make it just to have more depth and this is when in the 90s where the demand started to be uh, bigger and whiskey was getting a bit more popular and arrived also more in, in supermarkets and stuff 
the demand started to be higher and they had to lower the content of the old uh, casks to let it for the single molds and also to uh, some special edition and stuff but it's another story I'm gonna try it again and then compare it with the uh, very interesting I won't lie to you and say oh yeah I sense old Macallan sometimes I do I don't sense it really but I can imagine that some Macallan cask with a lot of a uh, green elements in it could be part of this as like I said I can tell there are some Highland box in there Glenturet maybe there's some kind of weirdness in this single mold that I might be guessing here uh, all the rest is guess because I don't uh, it is hard to tell so far so much it's melted now because of all the time passed in the, in the bottle I'm trying now this very recent bottle from this year. Sanjeva. Well, very strong on all. Mm, sherry cask with some kind also of bitterness. There's a nuttiness that's obvious from the sherry casks, dried fruits, etc. But there's more where I couldn't really describe all the things that are in, in the older. It's more obvious, like something of a blended whiskey from today with lots of uh, burnt caramel coming probably both from the, sh the, the malt and the grain. Um, Vanilla a bit, but not as, not too much. Yeah, burnt wood, caramel, the right fruits. Some slightly bitter bitter nuts, hazelnuts. A bit frustrating neat, I have to say. Uh, I like this one with some fresh water. It used to be better uh, five years ago, I have to say. But still, I like the fact it is different from the other blended whiskies, uh, the Scottish blended whiskies. It has its style on its own, focusing on sherry and the Highland Park style. So the heather honey notes. Yeah, also some dark chocolate. I have to say. I'm gonna try a few drops in the old one. Just two less than for the new one. Both at 40% by the way. Uh, no, older is 43, new is 40. At least for France, probably it can be 43 for some other markets, I guess. And I put three in the, in the most recent one, because I think it can handle more. My God, 33 minutes. Thank you for, for your patience, everyone. Really, I know it's a struggle. I know I lose a lot of viewers each time I go 30 minutes plus or even more than 15. But it's for now and not for all the reviews, but also if I do comparison and context, I have to be that long. Uh, it's my style, um, so I hope some of you will find some interest. So on to the old one, uh, which also I forgot to show you. You see how it can be longer. How fancy and, and old-fashioned is the uh, a bit damage and a little bit of mushroom pollution in there. Uh, how how funny is the old packaging? Uh, it's very very special when i saw the, the the box already i said "Ooh, that is an old one i have to pick pick it up <laughs> well um 
the new one comes with no box uh, uh, to make it clear I just kept this all because I found it nice and, and a bit embossed stuff and I wanted to show it to you because all the 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 fuss about the grouse varieties and the story okay the old one now uh, starts to exhale some um, to show some chocolate notes milk chocolate and dark chocolate on the nose some cinnamon some uh, nutmeg forgot to speak of the spices on the new one but hmm I wouldn't say I'm 100% sure, but now I can sense already on the nose some Glenrothes and Tem du Pots, in my opinion, with the half herbal style of the, of the early Tem du style. Absolutely different from the ones you know now. Mm. Yeah, still very melted so very hard to tell each each the, uh, note but there's some now there's some notes from the more recent one coming in still much less caramel much less burnt wood even natural I mean it's not a criticism of uh, how sanitized the whiskies are today they are for many and this one is but there's some there's still some similarities while tasted blind i have uh, to be honest i would never guess it's a famous cross while the other i i probably would so nice still a bit green mushroomy uh, um, some mixed tea varieties a uh, bit of green bit of earl grey bit of black but over infused again like many it's it's a common note to old-fashioned styles of whiskies in the 60s 70s often it's a general tea so take it with a pinch of salt but bit more sherry but I'm not sure in the past and you might be surprised there was so much focus on sherry or it has been lost in the in the um, angel share in the bottle angel share if I may say the OBE this is most probable probable because anything that's very tiny very subtle and anything that is smoky often evaporates but still it's a beautiful whiskey per se now this one uh, with a few drops and then we're gonna wrap it up it's already too long or long yeah it gets more gentle milk chocolate yeah maybe now dark chocolate for sure dried fruit sultanas and apricots maybe um pure apples but very baked for a long time but it's it's a second ground notes some nutmeg some cinnamon uh, maybe some cloves but not very uh, ginger not really the honey and finishing on very tiny notes but still there of a bit prickling back black pepper but quite a subtle blend even today so I still recommend it um, yeah that's it for the comparison next one will be normally uh, the two Johnny Walker red um, but I might 
put in between something more appealing to uh, single mold fans, we'll see. Uh, and also some maybe some overview, but I'm alternating things. And I think as we coming uh, close to uh, February, I'm going to attack the French topic, uh, mostly in, in French, but also in English. And maybe uh, as much as I, as soon as I can, the Cognac and Armagnac. Uh, it's a bit on the side topic of, of my channel, but I, I'm still interested in it. I invested a bit in some bottles. So hope you'll still be there, hoping you a nice weekend, maybe if this might be uploaded tomorrow, not today, I don't know, we'll see. Cheers and mostly take care during this hard times. <laughs>